Let's hear from both sides of the aisle here. University of Maryland lecturer Dr. Jason Nichols is back, member of the President's National Security Education Board, host of America First on Salem Radio and Sinclair Media contributor Dr. Sebastian Gorka and Sinclair political commentator Amisha Cross. Guys, I want to bring this to your attention. This week, I saw something I never thought I'd see before. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi giving Wolf Blitzer a hard time actually saying that Wolf is in the tank for Republicans. What gives, Jason? Well, I, I actually was very proud of Wolf Blitzer for doing his job as a journalist and pushing uh, a member of government. I think one of the things that we've seen on, on both sides of the aisle is they get cozy with certain media. We know that the president claims victimization from any media that, that doesn't exactly like uh, pat him on the back. And I was, uh, you know, a little disappointed that N Nancy Pelosi actually went after Wolf Blitzer that way for asking her difficult questions that many Americans want to know the answer to. And it wasn't the most difficult question in the world. She could have easily stated the fact that, you know, uh, they want more and they, they believe that Americans deserve more. Uh, I don't think Wolf Blitzer was in the was in anybody's camp, just like uh, Chris Wallace. I think they were doing their job as journalists. Very good. Sebastian, here's what the topic was. The topic was that the Republicans have come up from $1.4 trillion for COVID relief to $1.6 to $1.8, and Pelosi's team has decided to hover it for $2.2 trillion. Sebastian, Wolf rightly asks, isn't $1.8 trillion better than nothing at all? And she pushed back, Sebastian. It's incredible, like a, a broken clock is right twice a day. Uh, CNN, the Clinton News Network, finally did an act of random journalism. Th this is who Nancy Pelosi is. She's Marie Antoinette resurrected, the woman who's proud of her $100 a gallon ice cream that she keeps in her $23,000 fridge. She said, what are you talking about, Mr. GOP talking points? This is today's Democrat Party. She dripped arrogance. She doesn't care about her so-called constituents. It's about power, power, and pork, and pork for California, which, by the way, just happens to be run by her nephew, Newsom, um, Gavin Newsom, as well. So it's all about Chicago-style politics. It's money, it's graft, it's grift. And it should disgust American voters. Down ticket GOP is the way to go. And, and um, Misha, let me add one thing besides the money, as Sebastian points out. Maybe it's just Nancy Pelosi refuses to give the Trump White House or President Trump a win this close to the election. Well, one of the things that I think was problematic in that interview, and Jason pointed out a little bit of it earlier, was that there was a question that was asked that she could have easily responded to in kind and gotten her point across. Um, Typically, Nancy Pelosi is extremely tempered. She's somebody who understands and calculates a lot of her moves and motivations in alignment with where the party is going. I think that in this in this realm of we do have an election cycle just around the corner, um, many people have already voted. It's one of those situations where Americans, hardworking Americans who have been out of work for months now are looking for some type of reprieve. And what Nancy Pelosi should have done was gone on and talked about why she didn't think that this package was what it could be why she was holding off. And I think that she could have made that argument. But Wolf Blitzer, to his credit, did exactly what he is supposed to do, push down and ask the tough questions, because those are questions that the American public wants right. to know as well. Right, um, just like when they pushed President Trump, when he had originally said that he wasn't interested in signing anything until post-election, this is the same type of questioning that I think that Nancy right. Pelosi should also have to face. Very quickly, guys, keep answers concise. Should Nancy Pelosi be replaced as Speaker of the House? I'll start with you, Jason. Keep you the 15 seconds, if you don't mind. No, I, I think Nancy Pelosi has done a very good job. She's the person who got health care for 20 million Americans. I think that earns you more time as Speaker uh, of the House. So I, I believe she's doing a good job. One bad interview doesn't spoil her entire career and her entire record. Um, Sebastian? I don't usually do this. Uh, let me try and answer that with some Democrat talking points. She's old. She's white. She's corrupt. She's got to go. <laughs> Amisha? Nancy Pelosi has been the most effective speaker of the House this nation has ever seen. She absolutely should go again. I don't know. You know, I, I look at this, and, and, and there are people who are really struggling, you guys, and they're really struggling out there because they're being laid off. They're working in restaurants. They're working in bars. They're working in airline industries. They're being furloughed. They're being fired. I, I, and for, for Nancy Pelosi to say that $1.8 trillion, she'd rather take nothing 
as, as Sebastian points out, while she sits in front of her $20,000 refrigerators eating her $100 ice cream, is just tone deaf. Guys are going to have to leave it right there. Jason Nichols, Sebastian Gorka, and Misha Cross, thank you as always. Thanks, Eric. Thank, thank you, Eric.